Good evening, everyone. I'm Pat Harvey. And believe it or not, in just the next couple of weeks, every registered voter in the state of California will receive a mail-in ballot for our next election. It's the June primary. And one of the most talked about and most important races in LA County is that for sheriff. Joining me now to talk about these issues is our senior reporter, Ross Colombo, who has been covering the sheriff's race for CBS2, KCAL 9 News, and CBS News Los Angeles. Ross? Sheriff Alex Villanueva would like another four years on the job as the top law enforcement officer for the county, but every candidate here tonight wants to take that job away from him. It is, of course, a critical race to all voters across the county. Recent polling showing that public safety and crime are the top concerns of everyone in Los Angeles. People want to see new leadership and new vision for what public safety should be for Los Angeles County. Alex Villanueva won the job four years ago in a stunning upset. He has won supporters and attracted critics for his confrontational style as the leader of the second largest law enforcement organization in the country. Let's slam the sheriff's department again. He's famously battled with county leaders, supervisors, the district attorney, the sheriff's inspector general, and never makes apologies. Three entities that you need to do your job. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Can you do the job with all of this controversy and fighting? Well, here's the thing. I've been doing the job in spite of all this. He's now running for re-election against a large group of challengers and in a recent interview with me defended his record, even though the rate of many serious crimes has risen dramatically the past two years. At the end of the day, we're trying to make the community safer and uh, we're succeeding in that. How are you succeeding in making the community safer? It sounds like you haven't succeeded in that. Well, the numbers are going the wrong direction. In other areas, the numbers Isn't that are going... the metric? Not at all. The pandemic happened on my watch as well. Civil unrest, defunding of law enforcement. So will Sheriff Villanueva serve another four years or will one of these challengers take his job? To help you make your decision, CBS News Los Angeles is proud to present this special live one-hour community event, Meet the Candidates for L.A. County Sheriff. And in the next hour, we will be discussing the top issues of the race with six of the people and, of course, the sheriff running for office. We're going to be asking a series of questions. Each candidate will have a chance to respond. Each candidate will get at least one minute to respond, and we will give additional time for some of those responses when necessary. Well, let's meet the candidates running for office. First up is Sheriff Alex Villanueva. He wants another four-year term. Also, we have uh, LAX Airport Chief Cecil Rambo. He is currently the chief at LAX, and after 33 years, he retired from LASD in 2014 as an assistant sheriff. Well, Robert Luna recently completed his service as the Long Beach Chief of Police. He spent 36 years at the county's second largest department. We also have Eli Vera, a 33 and a half year veteran of LASD. He was promoted to the rank of chief. He's served in various capacities over the years, including the technology and support division. And he just retired, in fact, a few days ago. Well, Matt Rodriguez has spent 32 years in law enforcement and as a security specialist in government. He retired as a captain from the LA County Sheriff's Department and went on to serve a number of other roles. Most recently, he was interim chief of police and interim assistant chief of police for the city of Santa Paul. And we have Captain Britta Steinbrenner. She is a 35 year veteran of LASD. She recently retired though, to focus on her candidacy. At the time of her retirement, she was the captain of the County Services Bureau. Eric Strong, a 30 year veteran of law enforcement, the last 11 years he served as a Lieutenant at the LA County Sheriff's Department. And before that, he worked at the Compton Police Department and served in the US Marines. We want to thank you all for being with us this evening, and I just want to refocus the reason that we're having this town hall. We're living in some of the most challenging times, certainly in our lifetimes. People are scared, they're frightened for their families, their homes, and their neighborhood. And because of that, they want strong leadership. Now, this is how we're going to start this uh, first round of our town hall. Sheriff Yenaveva will get the first question, which is, why do you think you deserve a second term? And the candidates, why is it time for someone else 
to lead the department. So Sheriff Villanueva, we will start with you. Why do you think you deserve a second term? Well, thank you for the opportunity and I wanna welcome everyone to this debate. And uh, I can tell you this, it's very simple. I've been in office now for one term, almost one term completed. And everything I campaigned on, I've actually executed. We have the body-worn cameras, the ultimate act of transparency and accountability. We've kicked <clears throat> ICE out of the county jails. We eliminated the SCAP grant funding. We've created the most diverse sheriff's department in the history of the nation now for pushing the 20% mark for sworn females. All of the command staff, all the way to the entry level is a true reflection of the diversity of the community. Our transparency promise is now kept on our website. We have the transparency reformed our use of force reporting and all of our internal affairs investigation processes where we're holding our employees accountable. And we're doing this in some trying conditions, the pandemic, civil unrest in multiple attempts at defunding the department and actually trying to destroy the ability of the department to serve the needs of the community. Our homeless outreach, we're knocking it out of the park. We're cleaning up homeless encampment after homeless encampment. And we're doing this using an innovative strategy that's never been used before, and it is working. And that is the most important thing. And the communities that have had these encampments cleaned up are appreciating it. They're extremely thankful, and they only ask to see more. And we're going to keep providing more. My second term in office will be all about homelessness and violent crime and nothing else. All right, Sheriff Villanueva, thank you. Next, we're going to speak with Chief Rambo, you know, Chief, you have one of the toughest political ads out right now. And it, frankly, for more than two minutes, attacks the current sheriff on his record, uh, comparing him to the former sheriff, Lee Baca, who served time in prison. Uh, do you believe he deserves any more time? And why do you believe you should be sheriff? Well, you know, I, I'm excited really to share my platform. Uh, I don't believe this, the current sheriff uh, deserves another four years. Quite frankly, the last four years have been full of acrimony. He started out on the wrong foot by really not uh, working well with the Board of Supervisors. Uh, although he's an elected equal to the board, uh, there's a way to get things done in a much more collaborative way. Uh, and it's something I've done over the last 40 years of my career here. Um, in terms of uh, moving forward into the future, the very program that he has, the host team, I created that back in 2004 uh, when I was a commander of the Community Oriented Policing Bureau. So I have a, a number of, of uh, methods and tried and true uh, processes and procedures that I've used over the last 30 years uh, to deal with the homeless, mentally ill, uh, and also deal with uh, rising crime rates. I used to be the commanding officer over all of the gang operations in LA County, working very closely with the federal government as well as state and LAPD. All right, uh, we're going to go with uh, Robert Luna now, the former chief of uh, Long Beach Police Department. And you've been listening to uh, what uh, Sheriff Villanueva had to say, and of course, Chief Cecil Rambo would like to hear from you as to why you want to lead the, uh, the department for L.A. County Sheriff. And if you'd like to uh, respond to some of the some of the things that your challengers have said, please feel free to do so. Yeah, thank you for having me on and, and making this race as important as it is uh, putting it out in front of the viewers so they can listen to all of us speak. And I'm hoping everyone does their background on each and every one of us. But to answer that same question, uh, I don't believe that the sheriff's term has gone well. Uh, his performance uh, has not been very good at all. Uh, I think I can do a much better job and uh, more specifically, when I t attack the sheriff's performance, I am talking about uh, the fact that uh, he doesn't collaborate with almost anybody. Uh, it's very difficult. The list of people he, he does collaborate with is short, and the one he doesn't is very lengthy. He has no relationships. Uh, there's very little leadership uh, at the LA County uh, Chief's level. Uh, he's one of the, he is the chief law enforcement officer for the county. Uh, and he's been kind of an absentee landlord there. And uh, I believe uh, that has to absolutely change. And uh, his leadership style is creating dysfunction and chaos in our county, and it's putting our public safety at risk. All right, Chief Luna, thank you. Next, we're gonna go to Eli Vera. You know, Eli, this is an interesting question for you because in the very beginning, you actually supported uh, Sheriff Villanueva, but then you had a dramatic change of heart. And in fact, you just left recently from LASD. So you've worked with him up until a few months ago. What are your current thoughts right now 
about whether he should continue or why you should have the next term as sheriff? Well, I absolutely uh, believe that he should not continue in office. Um, I've never seen a sheriff that's been more divisive than the current sheriff of Los Angeles County. I've never seen someone who has uh, uh, created so much chaos internally in the organization and alienated sections of Los Angeles in, in huge groupings. Um, I believe that I should be the next sheriff of Los Angeles County because I have the uh, demeanor, I have the experience, and I focus on what's most important. And I believe the sheriff's department's primary function is public safety. We have to keep Los Angeles safe. I've done that throughout my entire career. My assignments have been some of the highest risk assignments in the sheriff's department. And I've actually led those efforts to have reduced those violent crimes. But also I have good working relationships, not only with the board of supervisors and our, our oversight in the sheriff's department, but internally. And that's why recently I was uh, uh, actually endorsed by our, our supervisors union, our, our sergeants, our lieutenants, captains, commanders, our professional staff members, they see the crisis that the sheriff's department is in and they have the confidence in me that I can turn the sheriff's department around and be that professional that works with everyone, lowers the temperature and brings people together. All right, Mr. Vera, thank you for, for your response at this time. Um, we'd like to hear from uh, Matthew Rodriguez and I believe you retired in 2014 from LASD. You also were friends with Sheriff Villanueva at one time, but you have certainly come out very virulently against the sheriff receiving another term in office. Can you speak to that and why you feel that you would be better at doing this job? Well, sure. You know, I, I respect Alex Villanueva for the man that he is, but uh, his, as far as his performance as a sheriff, it's uh, been a dismal failure. And as far as our relationship, you know, we couldn't be politically different. We're on different sides of the spectrum. He's a progressive Democrat who's not tough on crime, who doesn't believe in importing violent criminals. Uh, you know, his homeless plan has just been a farce. The traveling down to Venice and now in Hollywood and in Alvera Street in the city, leaving the unincorporated areas completely vacant and a complete mess is nothing more than political theater. He wants to be the, the most popular guy in LA City, knowing that there's a mayoral race and that most people in this race are going to be uh, voting from the city. So it's pretty obvious what his theatrics are. Unfortunately, the sheriff's department is in shambles. We have a 100% increase in violent crime. We have a 100% increase in homicides. The deputies have arrested 40% less people than they do um, throughout previous years. And why is that? That's because morale is at an all time low and 1,500 people are off on long-time disability. Matt Rodriguez, on the other hand, I'm a mm -hmm. proven leader, co cooperative, collaborative team builder, problem solver. And like I said before, Alex and I couldn't be completely more different than uh, polar opposites when it comes to policing and politics. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks thanks a lot, Matt. Let's go to Captain Britta uh, Steinbrenner right now. Now, Captain, you just retired a few weeks ago. You were part of the command staff at the Sheriff's Department, but oddly enough, you had very little interaction with Sheriff Villanueva. Is that one of the reasons why you don't believe he deserves another four years and why do you deserve to be Sheriff? So over the course of my career, I've seen the good and the bad of the department and we lack leadership, we lack a vision and we lack our, uh, a moral compass and that's all under his command. Um, he talks about reform, rebuild. He hasn't done any of that. He hasn't combat the increases in crime and instead he tells you to call the Board of Supervisors. He is not opening up the books for fiscal accountability. He taunts the fact that he, you know, is in the black. He is not. Uh, he's not implementing new leadership. He's not mentoring new employees. He's not rebuilding our problematic uh, patrol stations. He's not uh, addressing those issues. We need to be known for community policing and community policing does not exist currently. We have to redesign our jails. They have to be state of the art. We have to help the mentally ill, uh, but within our powers as sheriff, not just removing them from the streets. And then you have to work with your elected officials, the board of supervisors. He has no relationship with anyone. And the solutions have to come from within the department. You can't go around and blame everybody else. So I will lead. I will have substance, I will have policies, I will have leadership, and I will have compassion to change this department for the better. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Steinbrenner. Must say that uh, all of these responses have uh, been uh, 
pretty serious against Sheriff Villanueva and the exact opposite of what he has said that he has done for the County of Los Angeles. Eric Strong, uh, you served as a lieutenant uh, for the last 11 years in the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department. Um, you have a personal story that um, I'd like to hear you talk about. And this has to do with uh, your wife in terms of uh, her being a whistleblower and what uh, Sheriff Villanueva's response was to that. I want you to speak to that and also say why you think that you could lead this department better than the sheriff. Well, thank you so much for this opportunity. You know, yes, we do have a personal uh, relationship, or I should say a personal history with uh, Alex Villanueva. It goes back many, many years. Uh, most recently, he did put her under investigation and transfer her uh, from her unit commander position assignment because basically what she did was she told the truth. Uh, she reported uh, several failures within her own command. She reported her own commander for being uh, absentee and, and not taking care of the things that were being reported up the chain, uh, which led to about 3,000 inmates being served moldy bread over a course of two days. And when she reported that, she ended up being the one put under investigation. Uh, but it, it has to be said that uh, about 17 or 18 years ago, uh, Alex tried to do the same thing to us by, by trying to target us, uh, both she and I, and, and putting forth efforts to, to smear our reputation, even to the point where he lied in documentation. And I think it actually backfired on him and he actually got in some trouble. So, you know, with that, the reason I think I'm the best one to, to do this is because uh, I'm not surprised. You know, uh, I know who he is, I know who his character is and, and anything and everything we're seeing is not surprising. You know, we do not have to have deputy gangs, jail abuses and, and, and cover ups as our headlines, but we do. And that's because of the leadership. It's because of the failed leadership. You know, I am somebody that brings a 360 degree perspective. I have experienced many of the negative contacts with law enforcement that many of our communities are crying out about. But I'm also in law enforcement and I've been doing it for 30 years and I have run the gamut of, of, of neighborhoods that I've worked and assignments that I've worked. And, and I know that we can do it better. We can do it better because we've been trying to arrest our way out of our mm -hmm. crises. It's not working and we need to okay. look at different solutions. So right. I'm here uh, to bring that to the table. All right. Thank you so much, thank Lieutenant you. Strong. You know, I think at this point we're going to stay in this round just for a moment longer. Sheriff, I want to give you a chance to respond because those are all serious allegations that each candidate has laid upon you. Allegations of corruption, of lack of a moral compass. How do you respond to these charges? Well, I can let, let me let me I'll make it real quick down all six. Let's start with Mr. Cecil Rambo. He was the unindicted co-conspirator who was the right hand man of Paul Tanaka. He should have been indicted federally. The only reason he wasn't because after all the corruption occurred under Lee Bach and Paul Tanaka, and he was the one standing next to Paul Tanaka saying, hey, let's work the gray area. He was the one that did all that. And then he he rolled over on his lifelong friend and decided to testify against him. But when all the abuse in the jails happened, there was Tanaka in charge. When all the cheating happened with personnel, there was Cecil Rambo right by his side. So Rambo is the last person. And I'll tell you that he has no, um, no business at claiming anything about uh, corruption when he was actually the center of corruption in the ta Paul Tanaka Lee Baca scandal right there. Set that one aside. When we go to Mr. Luna, Chief Luna, he allowed his city to burn down during the riots in 2020 because his mayor, his woke mayor, told him not to touch the looters. So we had to come in and actually rescue his city from his lack of leadership during that. And his own officers condemned him for his performance during those, those riots. When we talk about Eli Vera, another loyal Paul Tanaka foot soldier, it was responsible for a lot of the corruption under Tanaka's regime. And he was designated to be Lee Baca's driver to spy on him on behalf of Paul Tanaka. So I'm not buying that at all. And we go to the, the rest, they start losing significance, but let me stop on Eric Strong right there. I don't make it, I don't not testify falsely. Everything I testify is truthfully, but actually Mr. Strong, when there was a deputy involved shooting and the entire elementary school next to the Lennox YL, they all screamed as a assailant with an AK-47 was firing at deputies, a school with hundreds of kids running terrorized away from it. And all of us at the YL had to throw in our gear to go out there. 
and save the kids and find out who was responsible, his famous words to me was, that's not my job. And he refused a role to a shooting right in front of the YAL. So, you know, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Strong has had his chance, but he's failed miserably. And everyone else in Matt, Matt Rodriguez, he resigned in lieu of termination for an ethical lapses that he did when he was in the position of captain. And he's now a subject to being on the Brady list because of his performance. So people do all these things, but the question was, where were they when Paul Tanak and Lee Baca were in charge? I was the one opposing Paul Tanaka as a sergeant. Yes, and that was a tough thing to do because that killed my career in that administration. Everyone else was looking the other way and hoping they weren't noticed and looking to get the next rung on the ladder. That's not leadership. And oh, I'll leave you uh, Excuse me, Ross. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of allegations there, so we do want to give uh, the challengers a chance to respond to some of those. Um, we can start with uh, you, Chief Rambo, because he mentioned you first and made some serious allegations in terms of uh, your reputation or being involved in, um, in shootings and also being an alleged gang member with this uh, so-called deputy mm -hmm. gang. So I'd like you to respond to what the sheriff has said. And we hope, hopefully you can all do this in about a minute because I know you all have something to say. Chief okay, Rambo. I'll, I'll say this very, very quickly in a minute. Uh, if uh, I'm an unindicted co-conspirator, then find the evidence of that. The LA Times, oh, funny. all the news channels cover that. Talk to the FBI, ask them what my role is, was in that. The people that did cooperate and testified in that case uh, that were part of it actually went to jail anyway. Um, I really got jobs after retirement because of my integrity in that whole case. Uh, as far as uh, you know, deputy-involved shootings or in... Uh, I don't think he mentioned that, but uh, I have been in three. One, we recovered a fully automatic MAC-10 and $1.5 million in PCP. Another one recovered uh, some cocaine, uh, a huge amount of cocaine. In both of those shootings, multiple deputies fired. In the third shooting, I was assaulted at an ATM, and uh, basically it was a, a gun, gun battle between me and the uh, suspect. So uh, I can tell you that uh, over my 45 years in public service, uh, I have tried my best to be uh, above reproach. Uh, and as far as my relationships with Lee Baca, Paul Tanaka, it was not a matter of rolling over. It was a matter of being the moral barometer and the compass for the department, particularly at that time. All right, Chief Rambo, thank you for responding. Let's go next to uh, retired Chief Luna, the sheriff who you just heard, saying that you let your own city burn down back in <clears throat> May of 2020 after the George Floyd uh, murder came to life. What do you say to the sheriff? Uh, that he doesn't have his facts correct. Uh, he uh, Saying that the mayor directed me to do something, that's an absolute lie, but I get it. Uh, he is a show pony. Uh, he showed up in Long Beach after it was all done to take pictures and say that he came in and saved us. Uh, we asked uh, him for mutual aid several times. Uh, they didn't show up until late. Uh, and it's just, it, it's, it's typical of what he does. He exploits uh, negative things, uh, uh, the, our community uh, with the losses they endured, the police officers in Long Beach who bravely stood on those lines, uh, outnumbered, uh, outmaneuvered and so many other things. Uh, and then for him to say that it's, it's actually pretty shameful. Um, and, but I'm not surprised because that's his leadership. That's the kind of leadership he's shown through the entire uh, LA County, where instead of standing with us, uh, he stands against us. And that's a shame. And that's why he needs to be replaced. Uh, and that's why I feel I'm the right candidate to do it with all my experience. Um, he, be, he was a lieutenant when he became the sheriff. He jumped seven ranks. Uh, and then everyone wonders why he can't govern. Uh, he can't govern. He doesn't have the experience I have. Uh, all right. Years of command staff experience. Uh, and seven years as a chief of police in Long Beach. And okay. does it very well when he faces adversity. Chief, Luna, we're gonna come back and I'll, um, obviously give you some closing <clears throat> remarks from everyone about what you've done and your accomplishments. But we wanna get to the other um, challengers that uh, the sheriff kind of uh, just loaded on. And Eli Vera, you were one of them. He called you a Baca foot soldier, yet you were a, a lieutenant under Sheriff Villanueva until you were demoted. Is that correct? 
Uh, no, I was, uh, I worked for, for Bacchus Sherpak. I was his driver from 2006 to 2008. He called me a Tanaka foot sh sh soldier, which is ridiculous because I was never that person. And there is nothing to corroborate that I was a, a foot soldier for Paul Tanaka uh, in my career. I didn't support him when he ran it for sheriff. And that's, that's all been well documented. This is just typical Alex Villanueva. What has he done throughout his entire career? He has taken responsibility for nothing and he points the finger at everyone and anything that disagrees with him. He makes statements that are completely false and he passes as, as, as truth. The reality is that, you know, the reason that he's failing is like much of what has been said all along. He doesn't have the ability, he doesn't have the temperament, he doesn't have the maturity that's necessary to bring people from different perspectives together to the table. He's about dividing, he's about inflaming the, the public and attacking anyone who dares stand up to him. And that's why currently in the Sheriff's Department, he has the highest rate of people off injured in the history of the department at the executive level. Nobody wants to work for him. They realize the danger that they're in going to work every day if they tell the truth. All right, Mr. Vera, thank you. Eli, I'm sorry, uh, Lieutenant Strong, uh, let's have you respond to what the sheriff just said. He said that during a deputy involved shooting, you said, quote, that's not my job. Do you recall the incident and is there any truth to that allegation? Ross, that is an absolute lie and I'm not surprised. Alex has lied. I have memos, I have emails that have documented his lies. Uh, you know, he came into the youth center and wanted to take grant money for kids and buy vest and put it towards patrol functions. Uh, never happened. As a matter of fact, in my career, I've ran towards gunfire way more than he's probably ever experienced. So I have no idea what he's talking about. I would love to see some proof that I was there. As a matter of fact, uh, after he was moved from Lenox Station because of his uh, vindictiveness towards me, uh, he tried to retaliate even a year later, alleging that I failed to use force. I failed to report force. However, uh, I had proof of that, and he ended up getting in trouble again. So, um, and un unlike what Robert said, you know, I don't think it's his his rank, uh, his lieutenantness that causes him to be a failure. Uh, it, it's his lack of integrity. It's his lack of character. It's not the rank. It's the person, and he's demonstrating that over and over again, day after day. All right, uh, we'd like to get to uh, some more topics more issues uh, this evening uh, so uh, we're going to move on me, uh, with all due respect oh, go ahead when a man come when a man comes up and he makes up an inflammatory defamatory slanderous statement like he did toward me i think i get an opportunity to address it oh go ahead mr yeah. rodriguez yeah, in fact so, we thought so, you did so um, no I mean, the allegation I was that you uh resigned for unethical behavior and and no, sure. the allegation was that I resigned in lieu of being terminated. Let me address mm -hmm. that right here and now. I must have said something that really struck a nerve in my opening comments because there has never been a more false statement made by somebody in the history of law enforcement. And we're going to take this to the next level. I will challenge you, Alex Villanueva, to show Channel 2 and KCAL, KPCBS, or any other news agency where Matt Rodriguez was uh, resigned in lieu of being terminated from the LA County Sheriff's Department. It's not true. It's a lie. And you know it. Let me let me further one more thing. When that happens to you, you don't go on to become and be a city manager, public safety director, Metro Metro League security across six counties, an assistant chief of police and an interim chief of police. It's a lie, Alex. You made it up and I'm going to give you an opportunity to retract it. But we'll open up the books in your office in front of all the news media because I will lay you out right here and now. Well, all right, I don't think Sheriff Villanueva is going to retract that uh, comment right now. So if we've had everybody responding, we're gonna move on to our second round of questioning. And that has to do with crime. That is one of the biggest issues that uh, voters care about here in LA County. In January, Sheriff Villanueva, you said that crime was increased. Well, there was a 94% increase in homicides, 59% increase in auto thefts. You also said a lot of it was pandemic related and the Board of Supervisors placed a hiring freeze on you so you didn't have enough personnel, and you blamed uh, DA Gascon for not imposing stiffer penalties. Given all those challenges, and in fact, I believe today you said that you fear for the safety of LA County, considering what three Board of Supervisors did in terms of using your budget for other um, venues as opposed to 
hiring more staff. So I'd like to, to know from you, how do you plan on combating crime or turning this, this issue around with those challenges that you yourself have even stated that you face? Well, first, let me uh, correct uh, my statement with Matt Rodriguez. He resigned in lieu of demotion, not termination. All right, let's clarify that. And yes, and I'll let Matt Rodriguez explain that. Oh, yeah, regarding I rising crime, regarding crime, violent crime, we yes. have Prop 47, Props 57, AB 109, one-sided equation. You have a progressive rogue DA like Georgia Gascon on the other side of the equation who is not prosecuting even the reduced level of accountability, which is now from felonies to misdemeanor. He's not, he's not charging on the misdemeanor side. Then you have the Board of Supervisors who is handcuffing law enforcement on our transit system. They're defunding the Sheriff's Department, and you will never have heard a single word from a single candidate about the, co the concerted effort of the Board of Supervisors to defund the Sheriff's Department. Our hiring freeze. When we don't have cops, we can't make plans to do anything about crime if we're just struggling to meet the bare necessities of answering 911 calls. When I'm missing 4,000 personnel from the department via hiring freeze, via the curtailments, via attrition, all these things are definitely impacting public safety. We need the bodies back. And I'm gonna fight the board to get those bodies back and we're gonna take it above the board if we need to. But the public is demanding action. They wanna see more cops on the street, not less. And how come every single candidate who's running against me has nothing to say about the defunding efforts of the Board of Supervisors? That's a question they're gonna to have to answer. Well, Sheriff, we'll ask the other candidates about that. Let me just follow up really uh, briefly. When I asked you just a few days ago about this jump in homicides, 94%, you said that it is, quote, not at all your failure. Uh, every sheriff does has does have, does have obstacles they have to overcome, budgeting issues. Isn't that part of being sheriff? <clears throat> you believe that you're not responsible in any way for the number one priority of your department, which is the safety of LA County? Well, when you frame it that way, you look at the entire nation, we're looking at historical levels of in increase in, in homicide rates, for example. This is not unique to the sheriff's department. It's not unique to LA at all, and you know that as well. Well, that's so not true. Is, you have Long Beach know. that have the exact same homicide rate in 2020 and 2021. Their homicide rate was flat, 37 in 2021 and 37 in 2020. That's in your county. So what, true, what is the difference? Is, Why was there no the rise there, but a rise countywide? Well, you got to remember that you look at countywide, the demographics, the concentration of gangs, you know, the areas are impacted by violent crime. They, they occur in far greater numbers in sheriff's department jurisdictions. Look, look at South LA Station, Century Station, Compton, <laughs> East LA Station, Lancaster, Palmdale. You look at the situation there, it is far different than Long Beach. And Long Beach and the North area, Long Beach does have similar demographics. It doesn't surprise me at all, but you have to look at the aggregate number. And when we factor in the three things, the pandemic and that, the whole social situation that created with the rising tensions, the lack of all this uh, social outlets because everything was shut down, that is a problem. Now, if you want to pinpoint something that I did wrong along the way, please, I'd be more excited to hear about it. But when I'm missing 25% of my detectives, it's kind of hard to actually investigate and hold people accountable to crime when I don't have investigators. This is basic things that need to happen. Well, you know something for the other people that are running for sheriff, they would inherit the same problem in terms of a hiring freeze and a lack of personnel. So I'm going to let um, Robert Luna let you answer that question since um, Sheriff Villanueva did bring up Long Beach. If you were sheriff, how would you work around these uh, challenges and reduce crime in LA County? So let me start off by just saying I'm very concerned about the trajectory of crime currently in Los Angeles County. And I absolutely want to bring my experience as a chief of police in Long Beach and member of national law enforcement boards where I work uh, in collaboration with many people across the board nationally. I have a record of bringing down crime uh, and speaking with police chiefs around the country uh, to share strategies on how to reduce crime, violent crime, uh, by being smart and appropriate and balanced uh, on crime itself. Uh, as the sheriff, I'm going to bring all the uh, different agencies in LA County together 
working hand in hand, sharing information so we can turn this around. Uh, we can't sit back and point the finger at the DA and everyone else under the sun. Uh, first, we have to take responsibility uh, and come up with a strategy uh, like I did in Long Beach. And uh, that's what happened in the beginning of the year. Uh, they reduced my budget. I went through the pandemic. I had civil unrest. But at the end of the day, with my command staff, which was amazing, and the employees I had, amazing, uh, we came up with the strategy. We went to the mayor and council, uh, and and guess what? We rolled forward, and we were able to make significant reductions. During All right. So you're saying year, just you're saying quick. you you actually improved the situation in Long Beach, even though you were faced with some of the same difficulties that the sheriff talked about here. And you think you can do that for LA County? Have you on on record? That's what you just said. You did bring up Gascon to us. I, I want to pivot. Uh, do you support the recall? of DA Gascon, George Gascon? I don't agree with everything the DA is doing. I've had many disagreements with him, uh, but I do not support a public recall. I think that money can be used elsewhere to impact crime, uh, work on intervention and prevention programs. A lot of the things that we're uh, being struck with here in the county, that money can be utilized in an appropriate way. Uh, but moving forward, this is about working with people. And this is the problem. If you work with people, you problem solve instead of pointing the finger at people. We solve a lot of these challenges, whether it's crime, homelessness, and unfortunately, the sheriff's performance has shown a 180 from that. I have shown exactly I can do that in Long Beach. That's why I'm running for this job. And uh, that's why my mayor supports me and all the uh, elected officials in Long Beach, because they saw what I did. Instead of complaining and pointing fingers, I actually did the work. And at the end of the day, our community benefited from it. That's what needs to happen throughout the county of Los Angeles. All right, thanks a lot, Chief Luna. You know, uh, Chief Rambo, I wanna go to you about this. You told me during our interview that you know a, a thing or two about crime growing up in Compton in South Los Angeles. And because you were so familiar with the situation in those areas, you were the person that established the community oriented policing department at the County Sheriff's Department, which is still operating today. Do you believe that that unit has lost its effectiveness under Sheriff Nueva? And what are your plans to reduce crime across the county? Well, uh, yeah, I re reestablished it in 2004, uh, and uh, I'm not sure what his configuration is with uh, community-oriented policing, but I also had a team uh, the crime, um, called the Crime Impact Team, uh, and we targeted uh, violent offenders throughout Los Angeles County and also worked with multi-jurisdictional agencies such as LAPD and other uh, uh, individual cities that have their own police departments. So I think part of what really, it's not rocket science, it's not new stuff, what happens is when you have a dwindling number of resources, all police agencies are suffering from recruitment. People don't want to become law enforcement officers, budgetary constraints, only moving into out of the pandemic into an endemic. So what you have to do is pull your resources, work with your partners, federal, state, and local partners to put together task forces and really target the violent offenders using intelligence databases, technology, uh, and then really try to stop the, uh, the recidivism rate by creating intervention prevention uh, and rehabilitation programs while you're uh, in custody. Um, so those are the kinds of things, the, the totality of that formula I think has worked well, and I think it will work well in the future. But we're All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just looking at time. Oh, okay. So, no? Okay. We want to come back to some follow-up questions, but I wanted to give everybody a chance to respond to this because it's so important in terms of how to reduce crime in LA County. And we'll go to Eli Vera. Right now, you know, listening to uh, some of the problems that Sheriff Villanueva talked talked about, um, you were in the department for some time, certainly during uh, the pandemic, certainly during the uh, civil unrest. Do you think that you would be able to reduce crime in Los Angeles County, A, by working with the Board of Supervisors, perhaps even on a limited budget that uh, Sheriff says has really handcuffed him, so to speak, and excuse the, the pun there. <laughs> so. I don't think I know uh, actually what Chief Ramble was talking about, those efforts, those teams that he described, I led. I led those teams that were so successful throughout South Los Angeles that reduced crime. But let's address what uh, Mr. Villanueva is talking about as far as being defunded and not having uh, personnel. 
when I was still part of the organization some months ago, I identified over 69, 70 positions in the sheriff's department that were unfunded, that were being utilized for the sheriff for political purposes, whether it be his you know, secret police unit, whether it be the tech team that had been assigned to the under sheriff's office that has no business being there, whether it be all the additional personnel that were assigned to Santa Monica and his host efforts in areas that we don't have responsibilities for. I'm not saying that the homeless crisis isn't one of the major issues challenging us in Los Angeles, but the reality is that you're not addressing public safety. You're talking about public safety, but you're doing nothing about it. You can take those same resources that you've weaponized for political purposes and redeploy them back where they're supposed to be back in patrol, partnering with local jurisdictions, with the city of Los Angeles, with the 45 independent police chiefs to address public safety. It's not difficult, it's easier to do. And the reality, when it comes to the board of supervisors and being defunded, Alex Villanueva is being defunded because of Alex Villanueva's mouth. That's the bottom line. There is no trust in Alex Villanueva. He's proven over and over again to do whatever he wants to do, regardless of what the the boundaries are that we have to uh, follow. So at the end of the day, yes, I know I can do that because I've done it and I've proven that I am that person who gets the job done uh, day in, day out and have been very successful in doing so and leading this organization. You know, uh, Eli, it's really interesting because uh, when I spoke with you a few days ago, I asked you about that. You've just left the sheriff's department. So I asked you, is this solely the sheriff's responsibility, the crime rate? And what was your role? What were your efforts while you were there over the last two years? Do you feel that you made a difference in the department while you were there? Well, going over the last uh, two years, uh, primarily had been moved over to the technology side of the organization. But when I was in Central Patrol, I could have easily led those efforts, but it takes the support of Alex Villanueva. And from day one, once he got into office after, after a few weeks, we started butting heads. You know, going back to the banditos issues when he intentionally lied to the public and he talked about how he transferred 36 individuals out of the station forcefully, a complete fabrication that never occurred. All those individuals were transferred uh, uh, voluntarily, but he used it to create a false narrative. So, you know, we can't we can't affect change if the sheriff prevents you from affecting change. Okay. I'm going to ask you if you can give me a yes or no question because then I want to move on to uh, Matthew Rodriguez. But do you support the recall of uh, George Gascon? Well, I, I, I can't answer yes or no. Eli Vera, the private citizen, does support the recall, the current recall based on the totality of the circumstances. However, I do not believe that the office of the sheriff should be utilized for political recalls. All right. Well, that's that's a good answer. I would say that's a safe answer. And very honest. Thank you so much, Mr. Vera. Matthew Rodriguez, how would you reduce crime at LA County if you were sheriff? Well, thank you, Pat. You know, I am the rule of law candidate. I'm the one that was tough on crime. I want to get the, the, the deputies back to doing the work that they're actually trained to do. And that's to go out and enforce the law and take people to jail. And I don't care what Mr. Gascon does as far as filing the cases. The sheriff has demoralized the entire cadre of deputies by leading them to believe there is no longer a justice system. That's why we have a 40% decrease in crime. I am your rule of law ca candidate, your conservative candidate in this race, who you know stands for respect for the people, respect for law enforcement, and respect for the rule of law. Alex Villanueva does not get the luxury of saying that high crime rates are not the metric to measure whether or not we're safe. That's a uniform crime report, uniform crime reporting uh, statistic that's used in every city across the United States. And it may be uh, convenient for him to ignore that, but the fact of the matter is he's failed on crime, he's failed on homeless. He allowed George Gascon to slide right into office. He did nothing to support Jackie Lacey, the law and order DA, the pro law enforcement DA and Matt Rodriguez is your only candidate who has signed that recall and we will get back to business and make this community a safe again. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, Captain Steinbrenner, I wanna speak with you because crime of course is not just homicides. Uh, many people know that you were the captain in charge of hundreds of deputies that protect the Civic Center area, for example, during the George Floyd protest or protected our six county hospitals and helped uh, 
get patients in and out of those hospitals uh, for the last two years during the pandemic. So what are your thoughts over the job Sheriff Villanueva has done and what would your approach be countywide if you became sheriff? <clears throat> So as sheriff, you have to have the answers. You have to have the solutions. You cannot blame it on other people. I will have a CFO in place on day one when I take office. But as, as, as it goes to addressing crime, I'm going to address crime head on. I'm going to have regional task forces that are gonna go out throughout the county to target our high crime areas. I'm gonna have our crime analysis, monitor the crime trends, conduct the research so we see where the crime patterns are taking. I'm going to have dedicated patrol missions throughout the different areas so we can address it. Um, there's going to be me weekly meetings with the teams to find out what's going on, what's going on in other jurisdictions. It's called information sharing, so we're all on the same page. Station captains have to take ownership. They have to know what's going on in their communities. They have to um, interact with the businesses and the community members, what's going on, get their input. Our patrol units, have to be out there, they have to be seen. It, it goes back to community policing where you engage them with the community and you know what's going on. Um, our volunteers and our, um, well, let's just put it this way. Our volunteers are the eyes and ears for us out in the community and we need to embrace them and use them. We need to expand social media. You know, we've seen a great increase in smash and grab crimes, but there's nothing being done with it. We hear about arrests here and there, but what are the preventive measures? So I will right. be a private task force. So these are all positive things to address it and not just be there blaming it on someone else. I have okay. to take ownership for it. Ms. Steinbrenner, uh, very quickly, do you support the recall of uh, George Gascon? Yes, I do. But keep in mind that he could very well still be in office when I take office and I have to forge a relationship with him. I have to try to work with him. But regardless if he's in an, in office or not, we still have to make arrests. We have to keep the streets safe. All right, thank you for your response. Lieutenant Strong, Eric Strong, we'd like to hear from you as to how you would combat crime in the county of Los Angeles. Yeah, thank you. You know, here's how we combat crime. We have to care. We have to care about the people that we serve and we have to get rid of the us versus them. It's great to have teams. It's great to have sick teams and community oriented policing. But the mindset of every single deputy out there needs to be community first. You know, uh, our deputies, we're losing them because of our of our sheriff, not because of anything else other than the fact that they do not want to work here anymore. Um, it, it's, it's the worst that I've ever seen. So, you know, as police officers, we don't solve crimes by ourselves. We solve crimes when the community trusts us, when they can communicate with us and we get information from them and we have to be out there and that has to be our premise and not with just a team, but with every single person that is out there on the streets. And that's how we're gonna make things better. You know, I think it's important to note that um, every single person is valuable. And I wanna point this out. You know, we had an off-duty LAPD officer tragically killed not that long ago. And this sheriff's department found five people and put them in custody within a week. Every single person needs to have those resources. Every single victim is just as valuable as somebody that wears a badge. And that shows you what we're capable of. All right, Lieutenant Strong, thank you very much. We're gonna move on now to round three and we're gonna talk about the homeless issue across the entire county. This is one of those issues that every single resident here sees and talks about just about every day. We've seen deputies at the direction of the sheriff uh, move into non-contracted cities. And what we wanna ask, we'll start with you, Sheriff Villanueva. What role do you see the department uh, playing in solving the homeless issue moving forward? Is it the same as you've done over the last three and a half years, or do you have an evolving plan? Where do you well, stand Well, why don't we, team? instead of listening for me, let's hear the six versions of what they're gonna talk about me, and I'll address them, because it's gonna be a bashing session. I'm playing six on one ball here, so let's, well, you are let's the flip the script sir. here, and I'll, I'll reply last. Well, this is par for the course, he's crying again. Yeah, this sir, you are the incumbent, so I think it, it is fair for them to at least address your record. Is there anything you would like to respond to from the previous round? Actually, oh yeah, quite a bit, actually. <laughs> they seem to be unaware that we have task force in all areas of the department with major crimes, with Operation Safety Screw, with homicide. They're acting like these things don't exist. You think we're not involved in information sharing? We work in partnerships with the LAPD, with the FBI, and the LA County Chiefs of Police Association. So Mr. Luna, shame on you for not uh, for skipping that. 
We have a Reserve Forces Bureau. We're trying to expand to get to 1,000, which will be one of the largest in the, in the nation. We have a Joint Regional Intelligence Center where we do intelligence uh, sharing and analysis on crime and terrorism efforts, anti-terrorism. We have the Community Advisory Council, which we've uh, expanded and now is encompassing a lot of individuals, or 500 covering the entire county of LA in every different facet. Very important to interacting with the public and establishing trust. We have the tech crew that Mr. Eli Bear seems unfamiliar with is already part of the budget. It's been existent for decades. So, and then, and then tomorrow will be my 93rd town hall will be in the city of Santa Monica. So we're being very active doing everything we can, but not a single person said what they're going to do about lifting the hiring freeze imposed by the Board of Supervisors. It's like kryptonite for them. They can't criticize the Board of Supervisors. Why is this? Okay. Um, if anyone wants to respond to that, but I want to get to the homeless. Go, okay, Chief Luna, if you can really quickly. And the to, reason we want to get to the homeless well, uh, crisis because that's what a I'll lot of people in, in the county are concerned about right now. So if you you want to respond uh, very quickly, go ahead, Chief two, Luna. Two quick things. Uh, you won't find many law enforcement people who, who think Villanueva is a collaborator, uh, period. I mean, exclamation point. Uh, and... Um, uh, uh, that's the, the most important point there. Okay. All right. Uh, All right. And, 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 and he talked about relationships with uh, other police chiefs. Just uh, until a couple of months ago, he was completely MIA from LA County Chiefs of Police. There was no relationship. Why? Because it wasn't important. It's important now that he's running for re-election, but he was completely MIA, had no presence, and you don't have to take my word for it. That's a known fact with uh, with the LA County Chiefs. Pat, I'm going to take him up on his offer to talk about the budget real quick. You can cry mm -hmm. about the symptom all you want, but let's look at the root cause. The root cause is because you tried to restore a deputy sheriff who was known to terrorize women, something that you seem to be pretty good at and supportive of. And you know what? That person doesn't deserve, deserve a badge. And you didn't have any business bringing him back. And you lost your political capital. Jim McDonald was right. This is not a job that you do on the job learning. You, you have failed in every capacity, Alex. The electorate got it wrong. Jim McDonald got it right. And you know what? All right, I would, sure. I would, I would lobby the Go board. ahead, Chief, Chief Rambo. Go ahead. Go ahead. Very good. I would lobby the board for, to reduce the hiring freeze or let up the hiring freeze. Why? Because contract cities pay for law enforcement services, and if you can't fill those vacancies, it, it really uh, damages your budget overall. So for the sake of the contracts that we have out there, Community College Bureau, as well as all the contract cities, I would definitely lobby for uh, the board for those bodies that are being paid for. Okay, okay and that's why you need a sheriff just, that reduces the temperature if, if, in if the I room can, so that we can, get, can hire those folks. Oh, right. Let's go back to the board. Let's go back to the board. The board. Of, of, of supervisors. I want to get back to the homeless crisis, uh, gentlemen and lady. Okay, in terms of working with the board, most people would like to see a cohesive approach to ending the homeless crisis, and that means working with the board. I'd like to ask you, what role does the Sheriff's Department have in maintaining public safety while getting uh, people off the streets into housing and into care? And what would you do differently. And Sheriff, since you didn't want to answer that question right away, we'll go to someone else. Whoever wants to take that. Pat, I'll go first. Sure. Rando, let's start with you. I think you had your hand up first. Okay. Thank you, guys. So, uh, you know, the Sheriff's role is, is, is multifaceted. One, uh, he's got to be the leader in terms of working collaboratively with all the stakeholders. I did that with AB 109, with alternatives to incarceration, with alternatives to rehabilitation out into the field. The other part is a lot of people forget that we process thousands of people every week in and out of the custody system by bringing in uh, in reach, jail in reach to make sure that as few people get pushed out of this is very important. We also have a civil management unit. So when people are evicted, when the more eviction moratorium ends and people start getting evicted out of their housing, what are we doing as a sheriff's department to make sure that we have a housing program and we have all the folks that from LASA, PATH, topics that can come in and do in reach to make sure that folks are not being evicted out to homelessness. Working with across the spectrum of all the service providers, I think what's really, having been a city manager, I can tell you one of the frustrations that all of us have is there's not enough capacity. So I wanna work as a sheriff, I wanna work with all the city managers, all the city councils, as well as the board to understand bringing back capacity or bringing up capacity so we can have some 
some bridge housing, alternative housing, and permanent supportive housing. All right, let's go to Captain Steinbrenner. We haven't heard from you on this issue in particular. I know that your the thrust of your campaign really is community policing. How would that play in solving this issue, the homelessness issue across the county? So let me, I just want to add one thing. I have a very good relationship with the Board of Supervisors. I've been working with and around them and their staff for the last six years. And I do not believe that they are defunding our department. That being said, um, everyone looks at homelessness as a law enforcement problem, and it's really a societal problem. And you have to remember that my powers of sheriff as the sheriff are limited. So within my authority, I will focus on what I can do to be part of the solution. But we need the county, the feds, the state. They need to come up with policy to help us enforce the law. But I'm going to work to, towards reducing the unhoused beyond the housing needs. Everybody talks about housing. But what about education? What about a job? What about social services, counseling? What about what they're going to do in the future, the follow-up? And that's why I talk about I want to convert some of my existing county facilities into mental health and rehab centers. I want to staff it with counselors and professionals that will help these individuals grow and have the needs that they have. In custody, that's where I have the greatest effect because I have the wraparound services and I can partner with nonprofits and other community programs once our inmates get released so they don't come back to visit us. Um, in patrol, we have the MET team. We have the uh, crit uh, crisis intervention team at our stations. I want to increase those training awareness, mental health uh, training. Um, but the biggest impact is where I can have the biggest effect is when these individuals are in custody and I can give them the uh, skill sets that they need to go out there. We also need to look at other options. Uh, Latterman Short, what about a conservatorship? You have to form a team together to put ideas out there and vet them. It is not just going about uh, going out on the streets, grandstanding, moving the homeless because they come back two or three weeks later. So, and as sheriff, you have to have the vision, you have to have the plan, and you have to have your team, your executive implement the team. You can't be out there because you have to be in the office, running the department and affecting change. And this has been a long-term problem. It's been in effect for many, many decades. It's not going to be yes. settled overnight. Yes. It can be managed. And we've seen it get worse and worse over the years. Thank you so much, Captain Steinbrenner. Lieutenant uh, Strong, let's go to you in terms of what you see as a fix for the homeless problem. And I do want to just throw in another question. Um, are you in favor of arresting um, citizens who do not remove themselves from encampments or actually accept the help that has been offered to um, move them off the streets into better housing situations or mental health services. Lieutenant. Yeah, thank you, Pat. You know, to address this issue, you know, first of all, our sheriff is the only person and the only sheriff that was um, admonished about being uh, criminally mismanaging our budget. You know, he was the only sheriff put on a repayment plan. So that, that goes to show you, but in his only solution to everything is more deputies. Uh, he is trying to expand our service area through Metro. At the same time, he's saying we have 23 stations that are 70% staff. It just makes no sense. Uh, we are not gonna find our solutions to our unhoused, our mentally ill and addiction in a jail cell. We've been trying to arrest our way out of this crisis for, for decades and it's not working. So no, I do not think that we can arrest our way out of it. I do not think that putting them in jail is the solution, what we need are sustainable uh, resources that are going to help them get back on their feet. You know, we got to remember there's a huge variable in the homeless unhoused population. Some are suffering from mentally Ill, mental illness. Some are suffering from addiction. Uh, some are domestic violence victims that, that ran and left their home uh, for their own safety. You know, some choose to be out there and some are entire families. So, you know, there's not one blanket response that we can do on this. And notice this, that every single time the sheriff comes under fire for something such as a cover up, then he wants to go and say, oh, I'm gonna go clean up the homeless in Hollywood now. You know, we have lots of homeless encampments and things going on in our very own county. And he's taken department resources, he's taken county resources, and he's putting them in the LAPD's area to grandstand. What he should be doing, and mm -hmm. we talk about being collaborative, is showing us how great his model works by cleaning up his own area and then saying, hey, let me give you this model because it works and, and it's been demonstrated. So um, right. we have a great problem and we're not gonna solve it under his leadership. All right, thanks, Lieutenant. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, I think when we spoke, you had also said, we're not gonna rest our way out of this 
problem. And you also made mention of the sheriff going into non-contracted cities and spending essentially county money uh, to help the homeless problems there. What would you do differently? Well, you know, I am an expert on homeless, having worked three transit agencies on the West Coast. Uh, I have a very empathetic, humanistic view towards someone. I believe somebody who's without without a home. I believe that everybody has the basic human need and right to have shelter. Uh, I believe that what we have to do is we have to be collaborative. We have to reach out to the stakeholders all across L.A. County, Sacramento, and Washington, D.C. Let's examine what is working. Let's build upon that. And let's toss out what is not working. Um, the way the sheriff's going about it is just simply grandstanding. I said it earlier, going into L.A. City, it was simply political theater. He's trampling on the feet of our partners uh, in, in other jurisdictions as well as other elected officials just simply to get reelected. It's not the right thing to do. It's not humanistic and it's not professional. Well, Robert Luna, uh, Chief Luna, you have had... Uh who doesn't have a homeless problem, is that correct? Certainly on uh, the west coast of the United States and in particular the city of, of Long Beach. Can you briefly tell us what you've done to try to combat the problem there? What you would do differently in Los Angeles County? Uh, it's a challenge in every big city, but you're right. In Long Beach, we've been very successful and we've been very successful by doing this. One. We take a collaborative multidisciplinary approach. It's a complete team effort with our health department, with our fire department and every, uh, not only government department, but uh, community-based organizations. And we work so well together, but here's the key. You've got to check your ego at the door. Uh, and, and it's not about who takes credit. It's about helping the people on the street. That's number one. Uh, number two, uh, I became an advocate and I will as the sheriff uh, for basic needs like health care, food, shelter, and then even talking about evidence backed solutions, which include diversion and prevention programs, pre-trial pre services and restorative justice programs. So people don't become homeless. That's important. And then the other portion is that you got to be data driven. Uh, who are they? Uh, what are their needs? What are the interventions specifically that they need? So then we can attach programs to individuals. And then just one really quick thing, because it was on the previous and I my computer kind of jammed on me. Uh, the, the, um, Mr. Villanueva was saying something about the Board of Supervisors and money. The first thing I do, I become sheriff, is I go apologize to him for his conduct and I build a relationship with them because they hold the purse strings for the sheriff's department. And if we want resources, you've got to work with them. You got to work with people in order to get things done for your employees and more importantly, your community members. All right. Thanks a lot, Chief Luna. Eli Vera, let's talk to you. I think on the campaign trail, I heard you say more than once the current efforts to combat homelessness across the county are failing. What would be your plan then? Yes, rather than uh, going and go, repeating some of the things that were said earlier, I'll keep it pretty simple because I thought they were pretty eloquent and, and their, their positions and what they said. So I believe that the Sheriff of Los Angeles County is uniquely positioned to be the unifier, to be the person that brings all the various entities, the independent cities, the contract cities, the state governance, municipal governments, federal government, all these different entities together in a collaborative manner to deal with the situation. But in order to accomplish the things that were just discussed, you need a professional sheriff that instinctively finds the redeemable values in people that esteem others greater than oneself and that can bring people together to get the job done. Something I've done throughout my entire career, I was a SWAT commander in the sheriff's department, had to deal with multiple agencies, multiple egos and bring people together to get the job done. I think the ideas were, were, were great, but we need that professional that I am to bring everyone together to get this job done and not just point fingers. All right, uh, Mr. Vero, thank you so much. I, yep, Sheriff Unueva, I'm going to let you respond now. And I hope you can br be brief, too. You know, we've gone over our hour uh, because you have all been so eloquent, but we want to give everyone the last 30 seconds to make a final statement. But Sheriff, I know you wanted to respond to what everyone has said about uh, the homeless crisis. Well, you know, you've been we saw it. and you heard six absolute failed plans that are fact free and every single one endorses the failed status quo. We went to Venice and we saved the Venice boardwalk from itself. The boardwalk is open. The tourism is back. The shops are open. We saved jobs. 
That is part of the economy of Southern California, LA. $18 billion a year industry is tourism, and we have to defend it. We went to Olvera Street. We worked with Councilman Kevin De Leon collaboratively with LA Homeless Service Authority, Department of Mental Health, City Sanita Sanitation for the City of LA, Caltrans, and we're working collaboratively and we have results. Olvera Street is being cleaned up. We're turning the same attention now to Hollywood and we're gonna go after the next tourist destination and they're all in LA County. So if these, all of these candidates would be sheriffs wanna accept a lesser role and ignore the failed strategies of the Board of Supervisors on homelessness, hey, they have more of the power to do that. They wanna be a puppet sheriff, that's fine. But the job of the sheriff is to be the sheriff of all of Los Angeles County and be responsible for everything that occurs within LA County. And homelessness sure. is the single most important thing our plan is work and our host team is knocking it out of the park and we're going to empower them to continue working with everyone. Sir, Sheriff, are you saying that you solved the homeless problem then in Venice? I didn't say we solved it. No, no, no. Don't put words in my mouth, Ross. I'm asking. I say we have the formula that is working. Now we have to obviously expand it to uncover all of the elements of the county working in sync. But we've went all over the unincorporated community. We've been in 20 different cities and, and those are our jurisdictions and then we ventured out into the city of LA where there are problems that were in dire need of attention that the community was falling apart people were dying as a result of it we're losing five a day on the street while these people are going to play footsie with the architects of failure I'm not buying that at all all right um, we want to move on to uh, final messages here before we close out our town hall so who wants to go first 30 seconds. All right, Captain Steinbrenner, you got the floor. So substance, policy, leadership, and compassion is what's going to change this department. And as sheriff, I'm going to be known for being solution oriented and my ability to work well with others. I've also heard the whisper campaign that a woman can't do this job. I can, I will, and I'm laying the foundation to do so with my detailed policies. So please go to my website, BrittaForSheriff.com. They are a testament to my commitment to leading this department for which I will be held accountable. But one other thing, the voters of Los Angeles County were smart enough to elect five intelligent women to lead the County Board of Supervisors. I believe that they are smart enough to elect the first female sheriff in the history of the department to lead the sheriff's department. So for all of my voters out there, for the audience who put up with us for tonight, I would be honored for your votes on June 7th. Thank you. Oh. All right, Captain Steinbrenner, thank you. Lieutenant Strong, can we get closing statements from you in 30 seconds, please? Yeah, hi, Ross. You know, the only way we're gonna make LA County better and this relationship better with our communities is to listen to them, uh, to partner with them, to bring about true transparency and actual accountability. We need to open up our doors. We need to listen to our communities and we need to listen to every community. It doesn't matter which one it is. And we need to give value. We need to actually stop talking about defunding uh, law enforcement in terms of crying about the sheriff's department. And we need to talk about refunding our communities and giving them the resources and the services that are going to be sustainable. Uh, we have been going through this cycle for decades and decades. It's not working. We need to do something different. You know, unfortunately, Alex is always thinks he's the only one that's right. And he's leading us down a bad road and we cannot endure another four years of this. Uh, my children, my family is here in LA County and I'm afraid for them. So I ask all of you, when you get to the ballot, look for that name, Eric Strong. Thank you very much for your time tonight, and I really appreciate uh, this opportunity. All right, thank you so much, Lieutenant Strong. Matthew Rodriguez, we'd like to get your 30 seconds, please. Yes, Pat, thank you. You know, tonight the sheriff cast some serious aspersions my way, and you know, they're absolutely not true. Even his retraction was not true, it was a lie. I would challenge him to bring that forward as well. Uh, as your next sheriff of Los Angeles County, your conservative sheriff, I want to bring peace and tranquility back to the city, back to the county of Los Angeles. It's not the same county that I grew up in. The crime is terrible. The homeless situation is terrible. I will adhere to the rule of law through the respect for the people, respect for our law enforcement, and respect for the rule of law. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Well, thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Let's go to Chief Rambo for your closing remarks, please. Well, I just want to tell everyone, thank you for this opportunity. I'm really excited because all the things that I've been striving to do over the last 25 or 30 years, 
address the homelessness, deal with issues, work with the mentally ill, deal with drug drug addiction. Finally, have a collective group of elected officials that really from Sacramento to Washington, D.C., that we can all work together, have some resources and put our heads together and maybe take a look at homelessness as a health model where they do get pushed into rehab or we do get them off the streets. What Alex has done is move them from the beach to three blocks east. I will tell you that as a sheriff of Los Angeles County, I will treat people with common decency. And I want my deputies to be common, decent human beings and treat everyone with respect and fairness. And we'll work together as a team collaboratively to work to resolve these problems. We have the wind under our wings right now. We have the political will. We have the financing. Now is the time to take that leadership and really make some things happen. And I hope to be here next year. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much, much uh, Chief Rambo. Now we'd like to hear from uh, Chief Robert Luna. Uh, again, thank you for having me. Uh, I am the only candidate that comes from outside the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, and you've heard a lot of the challenges that are going on here. So you need somebody from the outside to fix a lot of this. I'm the only candidate that has experience leading a large, diverse, progressive uh, police department in the city of Long Beach, Long Beach being the second largest city in LA County. I'm the only candidate with a national and regional law enforcement leadership profile through the Major City Chiefs Association. Uh, I was the executive on the executive um, committee there and also elected and reelected to the JRIC uh, governance board. I have proven leadership with integrity. I'm a successful bridge builder with years of executive experience with the absolute right temperament. And you've seen some of that tonight. Uh, making me a complete contrast uh, to the current sheriff. And I would love to earn your support, uh, Luna for Sheriff. All right, thank you, Chief Luna. And Eli Vera, can we hear from you tonight for your final 30 seconds, please? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> I wanna thank you for this opportunity, but I wanna address the elephant in the room. One of the things that we did not discuss, the latest cover up. If the sheriff is interested in accountability and transparency, then why is it that he initially denied the cover up in the courthouse, the use of force, that he later admitted to it, blaming two of the highest ranking females on the department, then demoting them and he bullying them into uh, to retiring immediately? Why is it that he removed the commander who had the internal fortitude to stand up to the cover up and transfer him out of the, his position in court services division? Why is it that just earlier today he promoted his personal aide to captain? The same aide that played the video of the use of force for the sheriff at his desk back in March of last year. Why? Because he's doing everything in his power to hide the truth from the public. And I do believe that when the truth comes out, we will all learn that the sheriff has crossed the line into criminal conduct. If I'm elected your next sheriff, I will make public safety the priority. I will rebuild those relationships that are necessary and I'll do what I've always done and bring people together and show our deputies how we, we esteem others greater than oneself in an effort to bring the temperature down in Los Angeles and keeping Los Angeles safe, not pointing the fingers at anyone and being that true professional. All right, uh, and of course, um, uh, Mr. Vera is talking about an incident involving a sheriff's deputy who was on video placing his knee on the back of an inmate's neck. And this happened around the same time of the uh, George Floyd incident in Minneapolis, just for people who didn't know exactly what he was talking about. Now, Sheriff, you get the last 30 seconds, so please. Yes, I want to thank you for this opportunity. We've heard an entire factory hour presented by five candidates who want to be the woke sheriff, the next woke sheriff of LA to be paired with the woke DA we have, and how is that working out for the community? They have a love affair with the political establishment, but actually talking to people on the street, 92 town halls gets you to know exactly what the people on the street want. We have one candidate, it looks like he needs a rabies shot, so more power to him on that. But overall, we're going in the right direction. We're focused on homelessness and violent crime, and we're gonna get the staffing level we need. We have two supervisors on board. I need one more vote. And the path forward is promising for LA County, and it's gonna be staying the course, not becoming the sheriff for the establishment, for sure. Thank you. All right, thank you, Sheriff. You know, we want to thank all of the candidates for coming to our forum tonight. I've spoken with each and every one of you at length. We're going to be releasing those interviews on the web, so please stay tuned for that so people can go more in depth with all of your candidacies. I can say certainly that you're all very serious candidates with 
unique differences. Thanks for joining us. Yes, and thank you uh, for having such, such a enlightening and lively conversation, I would say. We want to remind our viewers out there and the voters that you will receive a ballot in the mail in the next couple of weeks. The primary election is June 7th. The top two candidates will move forward to compete in the election in November. So good luck to all of you and thanks again for joining us. Good night.